Good morning, math humans. We are going to do 4.3 today. We're going to be talking about Riemann sums and definite integrals. Our objectives are that we're going to evaluate the Riemann sum of a definite integral, and then we're going to evaluate the definite integral. So in 4.2, we would find the area under a curve. And I'm just going to use this same little graph for a couple of different illustrations. But when we would evaluate the area from A to B, we did that by doing the limit as N goes to infinity of the sum from I equals 1 to N of F of X sub I times delta X. And so in that process, this was the height of the rectangles, and this was the width or the base. Okay. But as you quickly found out, that is such a pain in the butt if you're going to try to evaluate the area under a curve. So we're going to use a different method. We're going to use a Riemann sum. The official formula in your book is there. I recommend that you don't use it because it's complicated, and I think it usually tends to mess with people's heads. So instead, I'm just going to walk you through examples, and we're going to chat as we go. So from this example, I do want to talk about this is a positive area and this is a negative area. So we can have negative area and that just means that it is below the x-axis. We will talk as we move along about what a negative area actually is. So I'm going to start in with our first example. So for example number one, <clears throat> we're going to have rectangles of equal size, which it doesn't matter whether the rectangles are equal size or not, but for the beginning that just makes the problem a little bit more straightforward. We're going to have three rectangles, and remember n is the number of rectangles, okay? Alrighty, our function is going to be y is equal to x plus 2, <clears throat> alright, and I'm going to go from 0 to 3. Well, if I have three rectangles, I could do B minus A divided by N to find the width or the delta X. So that would be 3 minus 0 divided by 3. So delta X is going to be 1. Okay. Alrighty. So here's I want to draw a picture of what this will look like. So here's my graph. And then I have Y is equal to X plus 2. So if this is 2, my function would go this way, and then if I go from 0 to 3, then I am going to have 1, 2, this is 1, this is 2, 3 rectangles. And I'm just going to draw those in. This is an increasing function, and depending on whether I use the left or the right end point, I'm going to put a 0 there, that's either going to overestimate or underestimate the area. So basically what we're going to do is the process that we started, we're going to sum the individual rectangles, okay? So I'm going to do the left-hand approximation, okay? <clears throat> and then I will do the right-hand approximation, okay? So I'm going to do one at a time. So you need to write the area from 0 to 3 is going to equal, and I'm going to put... The reason that this is called a definite integral is because I'm telling it where to start and where to stop. So this is a definite integral because it has a beginning and an end. And then I'm going to write f of x dx. The readers on your AP exam need to see this information. They need to see that you're going to take the area under the curve from 0 to 3 we represent that by writing the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx. Yes, you have to write the dx. And so here's what I'm going to do. So I'm using the left-hand endpoints. I'm going to do them in pink. So here's a left, here's a left, and here's a left, right? So remember that the area of a rectangle is the base times the height. The base is delta x. The height is the function evaluated at a particular endpoint. So my area is going to be my delta x, which is 1, times f of 0, because that's going to give me the height 
of the rectangle, and then it's going to be delta x times the height of the rectangle, and then it's going to be delta x times the height of the rectangle. Okay? The readers, you have to write out this step. If this width is inconsistent, then you would write down what all of your individual widths are. But at this point, then you would show what the widths are, and then you're going to show what the heights are. And they need to see it in this format. Then I'm going to show you a shortcut on your handy-dandy calculator. So I'm going to go into my y equals, and I'm going to put my equation, which was x plus 2. And then I'm going to quit. And then I'm going to do all of this math in my calculator, and I'm going to do it all in one fell swoop. All of my widths are 1, so I'm not going to enter the 1s because on a calculator that's a little bit redundant. So I'm going to do alpha f4, and I put that equation in y1, and I'm going to evaluate y1 at 0, and then I'm going to do alpha f4 y1, and I'm going to evaluate it at 1. And then my last one is alpha f4. I'm going to evaluate it at 2, okay? And then I'm going to hit enter. And notice that the area is 9, okay? So I'm going to write that the area from 0 to 3 is equal to 9, okay? When you're doing these problems on a test, you have to set it up exactly the same way. So you have to show where you're taking the area from and to, you're going to show that it's represented by an integral. You're going to show where the individual values come from, and then you can push buttons on your grapher and show the solution. Alrighty? So if you'll notice, actually I'll add more information earlier, but here's basically what we did, okay? And this is an underestimation of the actual area. Okay, because I have this little bit of inform a little bit of area that's unaccounted for. So now I'm going to do the same problem again. I'm going to do it in a different color. So I'm going to do the right hand approximation. Okay, so it's still the area from zero to three, and I'm going to have the integral from zero to three f of x dx. But now my right hand, here's green, here's green, here's green, so I'm taking the right-hand side of the rectangle. My delta x is still 1, so now it's going to be f of 1, and then 1 times f of 2, and then 1 times f of 3, okay? And I've already done that work ahead of time. I'm assuming you can push buttons on your calculator, alrighty? And then when I do the right-hand approximation, approximation, the area is equal to 12. So now let's talk about this. Here's the height. So now you'll notice that if I'm using the right-hand side, I have an over approximation. Okay. So the book will tell you how to do a complicated formula. One of the readers that I work with um, from, from the actual exams, he's a reader for the College Board, told me that this is all of the information that you need to show, and so I have changed the way that I teach it because I think the formula tends to make things way more complicated. So now I'm going to show you we had the equation in our y equals, so I'm going to show you how to check your work. So I'm going to do math, and I'm going to go down to number 9, which is an integral, and I'm going to integrate from 0 to 3, and I'm going to do alpha f4 y1, and I'm going to do a dx, and then I hit enter, and the actual area is 10.5, okay? So you can see that we had an underestimation and an overestimation. So later we will do the actual integrations, but for right now, your calculator can show you what it's supposed to be. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to do the same problem two more ways. So I'm going to redraw my graph, and then I'm going to use this graph again as we do our problem a couple of different ways. So here's the two. There's my graph. I have 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. All right. So we've already done the left-hand approximation and the right-hand approximation. Now we're going to do a midpoint. 
Riemann sum. And they're really all basically the same process. All I'm doing is I'm changing where the height of the rectangle comes from. Okay, that's a one. So for the midpoint Riemann sum, and the book makes this oh so complicated, we used in our last examples, I'm going to draw my little rectangles, we used either the left or the right endpoint. Now I'm going to use the midpoints of each of those deltas. So this is a half, this guy is three halves, and this guy is five halves. And those are the midpoints of each of these sections. So now the area from zero to three is going to equal the integral from zero to three of f of x dx. And it's going to be the delta, so it's one. I'm going to evaluate my function at a half because that's the midpoint. So now the height of the rectangle is coming from the midpoint of your delta, of your width, right? And then it's going to be 1 times f of 3 halves and then plus 1 times f of 5 halves. And this would be my midpoint approximation. And if I put those values in my calculator, I would get 10.5. And remember, the actual area was 10.5, so this is a really accurate approximation. So the area from 0 to 3 is going to be 10.5. All right, <clears throat> there's one more method, and it's called the trapezoid method. And it's a trapezoid Riemann sum. And I think this method is amazing because it's significantly simpler than trying to memorize the complicated formulas. And if you look at your book, you'll go, oh, no. So if you remember that the area of a trapezoid is going to be one-half the height times the sum of the bases. And I'm going to draw one of our little rectangles right here. So the height is right here. It is the perpendicular distance in between the bases. This is B1 and this is B2. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to sum, as I'm trying to make it pink, I'm going to sum one, two, three trapezoids. So I'm going to do the same basic process except now I'm going to show that I'm summing my trapezoids. In this particular example, all of my heights which are my delta x's, are 1. So that means that when I set this up, I could pull those values out front. So the area from 0 to 3 is the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx. Okay, here's the half, because each one of my trapezoids are going to have the same area formula. So I'm going to pull all of the halves out front. And because all of my delta x's are the same, I'm going to pull the 1 out front, so this is the half in the formula. This is all of my delta x's, and they are all the same. So then for the bases of my trapezoids, the first trapezoid has bases of f of 0 and f of 1. The second trapezoid is f of 1 and f of 2. The third trapezoid is f of 2 and f of 3, okay? So notice that some of them are repeated, so I'm going to simplify this formula to be f of 0 plus 2f of 1, 2f of 2, and then f of 3. And it's really easy to put this in your calculator, so let me bring in my grapher. I still have the equation in my y equals, so now I'm going to do, in parentheses, 0.5 times, and then I'm going to do alpha f4 y1 evaluated at 0 plus 2, alpha f4 y1 evaluated at 1 plus 2, alpha f4 y1 evaluated, I did 1, so now I have the 2, and then plus Notice there's only one of the three, so I'm going to do alpha f4, y1, evaluated at three, close, go, and there's my area approximation, okay? 
So my area turned out to be 10.5. So the area from 0 to 3, with my paper up so you can see, was 10.5. So now let me show you how we got the actual area using a real or a, a definite integral. So if the area from 0 to 3 is going to be the integral from 0 to 3 of x plus 2, remember I need to put that in parentheses, dx. So now when I do a definite integral, this is going to be x squared over 2 plus 2x, and I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 3. When you're evaluating a definite integral, it's always going to be top minus the bottom. Okay? So this is going to be, I'm going to put it in parentheses, 3 squared over 2 plus 2 times 3 in parentheses, minus 0 squared over 2 plus 2 times 0, okay? So notice this is the top index minus the bottom index, so it's my integration evaluated at the two indices, right? And when you do that math, lo and behold, you get 10.5. And so then the area from 0 to 3 is going to be 10.5. The rectangles do not have to be the same size, so I'm going to do a couple of things just to illustrate that. All right? It's nice when we do them the same size as we're learning, but let's say I have this particular situation. So let's say I have a curve, okay? So there's my graph, and let's say this end point is 1. That's always obviously a 0. This one might be at 4, and this one might be at 9. So you'll notice that if I were going to calculate the area from 0 to 9, it's still going to be the integral from 0 to 9 of f of x dx. And if I were setting up a left Riemann sum, it would be the, the first delta. And I'm going to write it out as um, show you what I'm doing. So 1 minus 0, f of 0, that's the left-hand side, plus, and then I'm going to have 4 minus 1 times f of 1, and then I would do 9 minus 4 times f of 4, okay? And so if you'll notice, this delta x is 1, this delta x is 3, and this delta x is 5. It does not matter whether the rectangles are the same size or whether they're different, all that matters is that you are summing all of the rectangles that you have for your image. And then I would get my value, okay? The other thing that's cool about a Riemann sum is that I can estimate the area from a table. And I think that's kind of cool. It is a common application of the Riemann sum. So let's say I had a table x, y, <clears throat> and I had 110, 212, you can see I'm making up numbers, 313, 7, 28, and 10, and 200, okay? And if I wanted to estimate the area from 0 to 10, okay, and I'm just going to show you a possible way of setting up that equation, okay? All right, so as I do that, I would set up my delta x. I might do this interval, and then I might do this interval, and then I might do 3 to 7, and then I might do 7 to 10. All righty? Okay, so when I do that, then my area calculation would be 2 minus 1, there's my first, and if I were again setting up a left Riemann sum, and then f of 1, and then it would be 3 minus 2, and it would be f of, what was I doing, 3 minus 2, so it would be f of 2, and then I would do 7 minus 3, f of 3, and I would do 10 minus 7 times f of 7, okay, alrighty. And then these values, now I can't do it in my calculator, are going to come from the graph. So this would be 1 times 10 plus 3 minus 2 is 1 times 
12. 7 minus 3 is 4 times 13. And then 10 minus 7 is 3 times 28. So if you're doing the math from a table, again, you have to show where the delta x come from and which height or y value that you're going to use. Then you would do this by hand, and then you would find your actual calculation. Okay? All right. Let's do one more problem evaluating a definite integral. So this is going to be, I think it's either 2 or 3. No, I'm going to put 3. And I want to evaluate from 1 to 3 of a negative x squared plus 4x minus 3 dx. This is just a definite integral. So I'm going to get, when I do the integration, a negative x to the third over 3 plus 4x squared over 2 minus 3x. And I'm going to evaluate from 1 to 3. Then remember, it's always going to be top minus the bottom. Okay. So I would do a negative 3 to the third over 3 plus 4 times 3 squared over 2 minus 3 times 3. And it's going to be those values minus a negative 1 to the third over 3 plus 4 times 1 squared over 2 minus 3 times 1. And you would do all of that math and simplify, and you would get... Four thirds. So the integral from 1 to 3 of f of x dx is going to equal 4 thirds. Alrighty, that is it for today. I will see you soon.